Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome. Victory Talk. I'm excited to be here. And I am also glad that you have chose to join us. You could be anywhere in the world right now, but you're here with us. And I appreciate that, man. Welcome to another exciting episode of Victory Talk. Let's get into it. Man, every time I hear that intro, I think, God damn, I am a good musician. Y'all know I made that beat. Yeah, I played all instruments. I was doing all of that. Right, That's me. But I chose to teach y'all about some other shit instead of pursuing my music career. <laughs> but that fire ass intro lives on. All right, welcome to another episode of Victory talk what episode is this what number is this this is episode 15 episode 15 that's what's up man we all we've been doing this for 15 weeks you know and y'all been joining us i really appreciate it today we got a lot to talk about there's a lot going on in the world we got tech layoffs it's crazy it's letting people go firing people all right we got some interesting stuff i want to tell y'all about you know Google just released an, its own version or it's releasing its own version of chat GPT. All right. So we're going to talk about that. But the bigger news is what Microsoft is doing with chat GPT. All right. Y'all might not know that Microsoft has been the hand behind the whole thing. Like Geppetto. That's a Pinocchio reference. I don't know if y'all had Pinocchio in Iran. <laughs> <laughs> Did y'all have Pinocchio in Iran? Yeah, we do have it. You have Pinocchio yeah, yeah, in Iran. Yeah, we have it actually. That's what's up. Without changing the name. <laughs> That's what's up, man. <laughs> Shout out. Shout out to Iran. All right, look. But there's a lot of stuff we can get to. Before we even get into the layoffs, man, um, you know, there's a lot to talk about. And I think we're going to start it off with some real talk. All right, I know we're going to talk about the layoffs. We're going to talk about all of that. But before I get into that, I want to talk about something that's really important. So whether you know it or not, your beliefs actually create your reality. What do I mean? I don't want to... I know I'm at the risk of sounding like one of those chicks who collects crystals and tell you their horoscope. She's wearing hemp jewelry and shit. She gets excited when she sees 444 on the clock. Oh, my God. Something good's going to happen. That shit happens twice a day, ho. All right. right. Anyway, I don't want to sound like one of them. Um, That's why I kind of want to just show you guys how this affects you from a scientific standpoint. All right. So we've all heard about, okay, before I mean this, if you don't understand this, how your beliefs actually create your reality and shape your world, then you're going to be, 
you have, you can potentially you can potentially end up being a victim to this as opposed to being the the cause. You can be effect instead of cause. What do I mean by this? All right, well check this out. I'm gonna show you a study. So there was a study. It was done by a guy named John Hagard, right in 19, 19 uh, I'm sorry, seventeen. When was this done? Hold on. Around 1954, I said 1954. The first line. All right, cool. All right. So in, in this study, you can you can take it off there, right? In this study, what the doctor did was he had some patients who they had this this problem with like some body part. I, I don't feel like reading the whole thing to you, but they they had there was an operation. Oh, it was on their leg, basically. There's an operation, a leg operation, right? They had problem. These people, they had problems with their leg, right? And there was an operation that they would perform on these people to, you know, give them some more mobility. This is back in the day, whatever, right? This doctor, instead of actually performing the operation, he did like a sham operation. Like he cut them open, fucked around in there, fucked around in their bodies, and then sewed them back up, basically pretending to do what he said he was going to do. Right. And then the people reported a year later the same amount of improvement as the people who had the real op- as the people they reported the same amount of improvement as the people who had the real operation. Right. This is the placebo effect at work. Right. Then there was another study. This was done in. Do I have this one? OK, cool. There's another study. This was done in. Uh, boom. 1996, right, where they had these people who had chronic pain, right, and they just gave them a bullshit drug, right? They didn't give them anything. They're, they're, this was just placebo. There was no control. The, the the placebo was the experiment, right? They gave them the bullshit painkiller, right, and people reported significantly decreased pain improvements in their condition just because they believed this was happening they believed they got something right but let's go even further i'm gonna bring you up one more this is probably the most interesting of the studies i have for you right this one's called mind over milkshake this was done in 1977 i believe right and here's what the researchers did they had all the participants in this study, they gave them all a milkshake that was about 300 calories per shake, okay? And they tested their hormones before and after, right? They gave all of them the same shake, about 300 calories, okay? But they told half of the participants that the actual, the milkshake was like 600 calories, right? It was, it was a high calorie, calorie dense shake. Told the other half that it was like, you know, less than 100 calories. It was actually like a diet shake. Keep in mind, it was the same, right? When they tested their hormones after this, here's what happened. The people who thought that it was a high calorie shake saw a huge decrease in a hormone called ghrelin, right? Ghrelin is the the hormone that shows, I'm sorry, ghrelin is a hormone, it's called the hunger hormone, right? And it signals to your body that you're hungry and you need to go eat more, right? The people who thought that they had a fatty shake saw decreases in that and they were less hungry. The people who thought that they had a diet shake saw huge increases in ghrelin, right? And they were still, and they reported, they also reported that they were still hungry, right? What I'm trying to say is the belief changed their bodies on a hormonal level, right? And this is science. This is I'm not trying to sound like one of these people who collect rocks and shit, you know, collect different color rocks and all that crazy shit. This really happened, right? You can see the real response to it from a hormonal level just based off what they believed they were eating. And this is crazy because when, they, when you have changes in ghrelin, that also affects your metabolism. Right. I digress. What does all this mean? Well, check this out. You have, okay, we have, we have you, 
You, that's you. That's you, bro. You're doing good, living life. All right? And then you have reality, right? This is reality. I was going to draw a globe, but I ain't got time to draw the whole world, right? So we're just going to say reality, put an R in there. Okay. This is what it really is. However, your reality is filtered through your perception. It's, fil it's filtered through your beliefs, your biases, right? So everything you see is filtered through this, through your beliefs, right? So even, so you may see, you may see this, right? Because it goes through that filter. Does that make sense? Like if you put on some blue color glasses, everything you see is going to be blue, right? This is your reality, right? But that doesn't mean that it is reality. Brandon, what the fuck are you talking about? I know that's what you're thinking. Bear with me. Your reality, <clears throat> you will experience and you will feel it. This is all that really matters. So, for example, let's say I believed that all black people are, are lazy. Right? If I believe that, okay, I can use that because I'm of African descent. You know what I'm saying? No condoms forever or whatever Black Panther was, whatever Black Panther was saying, man. All right. You believe that all black people are lazy, right? That's what you're going to see because you're, you're filtered through this lens. So you're going to see the homeless dudes outside or you're going to see welfare blacks and all that other shit, all right? And it will cause you not to see, you know, Barack Obama, right? He's not lazy despite what you think of him. Motherfucker's not lazy, right? Lil Wayne, right? He's all, he, of course he's not lazy, man. All the mixtapes he put out, that's a lot of content. It's a hardworking brother, right? Big Brandon Carter throwing up mad videos a day, right? It's not lazy, right? But you'll 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 believe that if it's if you go through this filter, right? That's the outside world. But what about your world, right? If you believe, oh, I, I have an example actually. Because your beliefs, hold on, man, let me pull this up. Oh, fuck. Give me, give me a second, guys. Bear with me. Tech difficulties, no problem. All right. Because this is important, Check, pay, pay close attention to this. All right. All right. Your beliefs affect your emotions, right? Your emotions affect your actions, right? And your actions affect the results that you get in life, right? And then those results will reinforce your beliefs and they become a cycle, okay? For example, for example, my girlfriend, you know, she, she, <laughs> she I hear her laughing in the background. Hey, I asked her if I could, if I could tell this story, right? She was under the impression that her butt got smaller, right? She's like, oh, man, my butt got smaller, right? Because she hadn't been eating this thing. And she believed her butt got smaller. She, like, really believed it, right? Okay? And that was causing her to feel what? Sad. You know what I'm saying? That was the emotion she was feeling, right? And then what was the action? The action was she was moping around the house. Oh, I got a little butt now. No mas culo, por favor, pardon me. You know, ah, culo poquito, Dios mios, right? All that shit, right? Because <laughs> that, and that shaped her reality. And I was telling her, listen, baby, you still got a big old, big old butt. You still got a big old, big old butt. She's like, no, it's smaller. I'm like, I'm telling you, I'm looking at this thing every day. I seen it more than you. I promise you that. Of that, I assure you. I've studied this thing. The ins and outs, right? Like, you know, I know this thing like the back of my hand. <laughs> and, and she didn't believe that. But, I was, she, but we remembered that the first day I met her in person, I measured her butt. Don't ask this long, <laughs> long story. <laughs> okay. She wanted to, like, start working out. So we took her measurements, right? And we had the measurement of her butt. You know what I'm saying? And it was 36 inches. A nice size butt, especially for, you know, such a small woman, right? So we said, go get the measuring tape. Let's just see. 
Let's just see, right? We went and measured it. Boom. The butt was 38 inches. The butt was bigger. All right, so check this out. But because she believed her butt was smaller, right? She wasn't seeing her. She was looking at it through this filter of she believed she had a bigger, a smaller butt. It was making her say it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> all right, I'm, I'm fucking this all up. We're going to start that over. <laughs> fucking put a mustache on her. <laughs> <laughs> butt <laughs> right <laughs> she believed that her butt was smaller right because she saw she looked at reality through this lens right she believed it and and she was sad about it right her butt was actually bigger all right are you getting this your beliefs shape your reality all right let me give you another example let me give you another example man all right this face id don't Come on, come on, bro. We're gonna have to figure out another, another strategy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, guy, 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 guy. Right. Okay. And then, just like in the same way, just like those people thought that they believed that they were drinking a, a low calorie shake, right? They they were still hungry because they believed they weren't getting enough calories. Really, they had tons of calories. Or the people who believed they were eating the high calorie shake in that study, they were less hungry because they believed they they ingested a bunch of calories. Okay, is this making sense? Hope you guys are getting this right. So, what does that mean for you? Right, you got to really think. Of, you got to really audit your beliefs on a consistent basis. Right, I never get sick. Never, never get sick. Right now, it could be because I'm just that nigga, right? I'm just the coolest motherfucker out, and I'm just a, a G, right? It could be that, um, or it could just be because I believe I won't get sick, right? Back when everybody was catching, um, COVID. you know, we don't, I thought we weren't supposed to say that on YouTube. You can say it now, C19, back when everybody was getting C19. You know, I'm walking around New York like I am legend. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and my girlfriend, she got C19. Right? She got it. Right? I'm over here eating food off her plate. After I weigh it, of course. Right? You know what I'm saying? I'm eating food off her plate. You know what I'm saying? I'm kissing in the mouth. We having unprotected sex. I'm like, I'm looking C19 dead in the eye and calling it a bitch. Guess what? I never got it. My boy, Jeremy, he had, I think they call them super spreader events. I think that's what they call <laughs> Peak C19. He had a huge mastermind at his house and he asked me to speak, right? Because he wanted it to be good. So he asked me to speak. <laughs> and, and he had like 50 some people there. And I'm like, all right, yeah, no problem. I'll show up. I, I pulled up, gave the best speech of the night. As usual, shaking everybody's hands, blah, 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 doing all the shit. Then I leave. Yo. Two thirds of the attendees got C-19 after that. Not me. Not me. <laughs> the only time I ended up did, I did get C-19 at one point. But here's, that's because my son had got it and he had a lot of symptoms and shit. And he sneezed in my mouth. <laughs> He's five, man. You know, you have five year olds. They they always do shit like that, man. It's why it's a wacky age, man. He sneezed in my mouth, not on purpose. Neither one of us is doing it on purpose. It's just what happened. I here's the thing. I didn't even know I had C nineteen. His mom gave gave him a test and said, "Oh, he's got it." And I just tested myself later, and it looked like okay, I had it, but I had zero symptoms. Motherfuckers out here dying and shit, <laughs> getting hooked up to contraptions and gadgets and ventilators and shit, all types of gizmos hooked up to them. And I'm over here, man. I feel nothing. <laughs> like nothing. Right. Here's the thing. I say all that to say. I really believe that I don't get it because I believe I won't get sick. I haven't been sick in six years. 
not so much as a cold and sniffle, right? Because I believe it, right? And it may sound crazy until you go back to this milkshake study when you realize that when people believe they had higher calories, they were less hungry. When people believe they had lower calories, they were more hungry, right? It actually, but it wasn't like a mental thing. It was a biological thing. That belief affected their biology. It affected their hormones. The science, science studied it, right? So you got to alter your beliefs. You probably have some beliefs that are limiting. You You probably believe that you can't do something. You probably believe you need, you, you probably have all types of beliefs that are holding you back. And you have to audit these on a consistent basis. And you have to audit these on a consistent basis. You know what I'm saying? I always believe. Another thing I believe, I just, I just believe things are always going to work out for me. And I really believe it. It's not like lying. I really believe it. And, you know, they, they seem to <laughs> seems to be the case, man. No matter how bad things are, people are panicking. I'm chilling. Oh, no, I'm going to be straight. You know? All right. So how do, you, how do we go? What does this mean for you? All right? What does this mean for you? All right. Well, the first thing you have to do is not focus when you're trying to accomplish a goal. Right? You have a goal. Okay. Let's say you have a goal. Right. All right. And the goal has results. Right. The, the goal, like, say you want to make $10,000 a month. Right. The result would be a hey, $10,000 in your bank account every month. Right. Cool. Right. Now, in order to get that, you, obviously, you're going to have to perform some actions. Right. You know what I'm saying? You're all, always going to have to perform some sort of actions to make that happen. Right. Now, here's the thing, though. Here's, here's where it gets self-fulfilling, right? People talk about actions, but they never talk about the emotions, right? Because when you perform an action, the mental state you're in or the emotions you have while you're performing that actions will actually affect how effective that action is. For example, let's say your dog dies. Boom. Somebody shoots your dog in the head. It's fucked up, right? And then you got to go to the net, but you got to work out. Let's say you decide to still go to work out because you a G, even though your dog just got shot in the head. All right. Now you go to work out. You're probably not going to have a great workout, right? You're thinking about your dead dog and all the shit you got to clean up after, right? It's going to affect the quality of, of, of that action, right? So that workout was not as effective. Or let's say, you just watch one of Brandon Carter's old motivational videos. Maybe you watch Excuses Are For Bitches, right? Then you go work out because that's going to put you in a different state. We're going, that work, that might be your best workout ever, right? Probably, you're probably going to hit PRs. Probably going to, you're going to lift all the weights. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right? And then that's going to lead to better results, right? The emotions that, that you have while you're performing actions really counts. All right, think about think about the last blowjob you had, right? Presumably some of you have experienced blowjobs before, right? Now imagine if she was like, ugh, I gotta <laughs> like she was in a, a, a negative state before she you know put it in her mouth, right? It's not gonna be that that action's not gonna be you know as a, as effective. But imagine if she's excited, right? What if she's like super excited and she's like scrambling for that motherfucker, right? <laughs> you know, that's, that's, that's that enthusiasm is going to uh, uh, have a uh, impact on the effectiveness of that action. Does that make sense? Hope you guys are getting this. All right. Here's the problem. A lot of you guys, you may focus on the results now. Boom. And then you're going to feel sad. Right. Because if you have a goal and you're like, oh, I'm not there yet. Right. And you're going to be saying, oh, I'm not there, man. I don't have it. Everybody got it. this guy got it or I don't have it or blah, 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 blah. That's going to affect the actions you take. Right. If you if you're thinking negative, or you're thinking uh, or even if you're just thinking I can't do it or I don't know if I can do it at all or uh, I don't, will I ever get that ten thousand dollars a month, whatever it is. Right. It's going to affect the emotions. Right. So what I want you to do, I want you to experiment with this guy. Is to not think about the results at all, right? And just focus on the actions, right? 
Just focus on the action, every action, each individual action, right? And just believe that you can perform that action well. And you probably can, right? I'm not telling you to believe you can make $10,000 a month and it's just going to appear. List out all the actions you need to perform in order to attain that goal. And each one of it, really going into business, I believe I can do this well. Every action, right? Whatever it is, boom, 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 boom. And if you believe that, right, you're going to it with a different energy. You know what I'm saying? You Just that action. Don't think about the results. Don't think about the big goal you have. Just think about the little, the next step. I believe I can do this next step well. Go into that and do that, do that. And that changes everything. Now, you, now, you, now you're performing every action with a positive emotion. You know what I'm saying? Now, what if you can't be positive? What if you don't know if you can do it? All right, cool. Just don't be negative, right? When I, what I mean, be neutral. Just be like, oh, I'm going to do this action to the best of my ability. That's cool. Maybe it work, maybe it won't. I don't know, right? I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this, right? But what you don't want to do is you cannot be negative, right? You cannot be negative. Because if you're negative about it, then we've already went into how that's going to affect your state and then your actions, right? Just don't be negative. I'm not telling you, you don't have to be, if you can't be positive, it's like too far away for you, right? You can't bullshit yourself. I'm not telling you to just be confident. Just say some affirmations or just say your brain. The thing about affirmations is your brain knows is bullshit, right? So if you can't genuinely be positive, then at least just don't be negative. Say, hey, I'm gonna do this the best I can. Maybe it work, maybe it won't, right? But just focus on the action, just every action, not the whole goal. Don't even think about the results, Okay. Next thing you got to do, right? That's step one. Think about the actions instead of the results. Step two is watch yourself talk. Right? If anybody around me says something about themselves that I know they don't want to be true, I stop them immediately. I'm like, hey, man, don't say stuff about yourself you don't want to be true. Right? I'm saying that all the time. Like, don't don't say stuff about yourself that you don't want to be true. I'm not saying you got to be positive. You, you, you can't be negative. I'm serious about this. So you'll never hear me say, I don't even want to give you an example, right? It's like foreign to me to say these things out loud, right? But I've heard other people say, oh, man, man, I just can't stay motivated to work out. Yo, stop saying that. Just stop saying that. Re, you got to reframe is like, I'm working on inc- improving my motivation. Right. Right. Both are true. It just one sounds like a bitch. <laughs> one sounds like you're just giving up, throwing in the towel like a little hoe. Right. The other one sounds like, oh, I'm out here trying to make this happen. You know what I'm saying? I'm I, I still I'm still in the ring. You know. Right. If you say, oh, man, no matter what I eat, I've heard people say. No matter what I eat, I, I can't seem to lose weight. I've tried everything. Right. Don't say that shit, right? Because that, that's defeated. That's, you, you already sound defeated. You've given up, right? What do you expect me to say to that? Oh, okay, well, just being fat's not so bad. Nah, man. What you want to say is, man, I'm working on trying to find the right diet for me that I can actually adhere to and, and, do, and, 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 and be consistent with, right? Because that sounds like a person who's still in the ring, who still got his eye on a prize. Right. And I can give you tons of other examples. You know, um, I, I used to have an employee who was always says, oh, I'm not good. He used to always say, I'm not good with technology. I'm like, yo, man, stop saying, you know what? This is a good example. He used to always say, I'm not good with technology. Right. And um, I bought this dude like a, um, a microphone or some shit like that, like USB microphone. Right. And it, it, because he believed he wasn't good with technology. How do you think that affected his actions, right? If he was, it was filtered through this lens. He didn't believe he was good at technology, right? Right. So, how did it affect his actions? He didn't even open the box. You know what I'm saying? He didn't even try, right? Here's the thing: USB mics are crazy simple. All you have to do is plug them in, right? <laughs> like it ain't nothing. <laughs> He's done way more difficult shit than that. All he had to do was plug it in but his belief right his negative beliefs about his ability to deal with modern technology made it so he did not even try 
right? Now, I'm not telling you to bullshit yourself, right? If, you, if you're not good with technology, or you, you got to say, man, I'm working on improving my technology skills, right? Everything's got to be framed from that way. Both things are true. You're not, that's not bullshit. You can say that with, with integrity, right? But if you say, oh, I'm just not good with it, that's a motherfucker who just threw in the towel, right? And then you won't try to hit your goals, right? I can go on and on. I can talk for hours about this, right? Because this is one of the most important subjects in the world, right? Your whole, your reality will be filtered through your beliefs, okay? If you believe that you're not good with technology, that will end up being your actual reality, right? Right? If you believe <laughs> that your butt got smaller, right, you will live in that world, right? Even though the the real reality is, hey, you know, she had a big butt, she was still living, living and feeling the emotions of a smaller butt. You know what I'm saying? But it works on a biological level too. I'm telling you, man, if you believe, like this study, if you believe that stuff you're eating is going to help you or um, if you believe you're on a, I mean, this, this one was the craziest one. I don't really know how to interpret this. These people believed that they were, they got a low calorie shake and so they were hungrier, right? The people who believe they got a high <laughs> calorie shake were less hungry, right? I don't know what that says. I, I, I don't really know how to interpret that. But I, I just want you to know that it actually affects you on a biological level as well. It's not just your brain. It's actually your hormones. This affects your hormones. Right. I believe I don't get sick. I, be, I believe I'm, I'm healthy all the time, no matter how sick motherfuckers are next to me. You know what I'm saying? And that's been my experience over the last six years. Right? So. I hope that helps. That's today's real talk. <laughs> is there anything we need to address before we get into any of this other shit? Uh, you wanna? Uh, there were some super chats. Oh, we got some super chats, but so, they are mostly just oh, they, they read them off, though, man. Like we, let's show them and, and, and yeah, let's, yeah. Let's show them some love. Yeah, Jay Suwitty. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Drop five bucks. Five Thank bucks. You. Shout out to you, bro. Shout out, shout out to you, bro. Uh, shoot. emoji. All right, all right. And wealthy vibes. Ty wealthy boss put a dollar on it, and then he actually he actually did this four times. So. Oh man, let's throw them all up! Boom! Yeah, it's just, it's good. <laughs> Shout out the wealthy vibes. All right, cool. All right, let's stay on track then. Let's stay on track. If we ain't got a lot of super chats. We're gonna stay on track. Um. Oh, should we talk about the recession? Should we talk about the the layoffs? I don't know. I don't know what the intro is for this. Put one on it. Uh, uh, <laughs> I think it's uh, just r- real yeah. talk again. Let yeah. it r- run it again. Run it yeah. back. All right, we are experiencing record layoffs. Right, Amazon this year. Is already laid off thousands and thousands of people. They're going to lay off more people this year than they have the entire time they've been in business, right? Um, seen layoffs from Salesforce. Microsoft laid off 10,000 people the other day. Um, who else has the layoffs, man? They're, they're all over the place, man. Um, it's like there's been t- tons of layoffs, man. Salesforce, Microsoft, Amazon, Twitter. The layoffs are, are, are crazy in the tech industry, right? And I, this is just the beginning, right? If you've been watching me over the last few, if you've been watching me over the last few years, right? I've been saying over and over again, hey, get ready, there's a recession coming. Get ready, there's a recession coming. Ever since last year, I've been saying that. Early last year, recession coming. Get ready, get ready. Layoffs are coming. This is how it starts. This is how it starts, guys. First, you see layoffs. First, you see it in the tech industry, right? Because you see everything first in the tech industry, right? You saw they hit record numbers on the on the stock market in 2020, and they are also the first to fall, right? The tech industry is usually a leading indicator of what's to come, right? Because things are moving so fast, and, and that and that and, and, and things are moving just so fast in that world, right? We can expect more, man. Honestly, we can expect way more layoffs. And 
one of the reasons we're experiencing so many layoffs is because we got to remember what it was like in 2020, right? In 2020, we were all carrying Perel around, unless you lived in Florida, in which case, you know, you didn't care about none of it, right? But the rest of the country, <laughs> we were, you know, wearing masks, rubbing Perel all over the place, you know, and people weren't going to the office for work. It was, everything was remote. And the company started seeing just huge demand for their services, right? And they started hiring and hiring and hiring and hiring, right? As people start going back to work, things get kind of back to normal. I don't remember the last time I saw a mask. I do live in Miami, so <laughs> I think masks are illegal here. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> but but what, uh, you see people getting back to normal, and you know now these companies are like, oh shit, you know maybe we jumped the gun a little bit, right? So they're actually trimming their workforces. The, the tech companies, right? But here's the thing. If they were making the money they were making in 2020, they would still keep these people, right? They would still need them, right? But there's also less demand, right? Their revenues have all shrank. They've reported earnings. The companies are missing revenue numbers. Their, their earnings are lower. So they're downsizing. This is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. It's going to spread into other sectors and other industries. Luckily, Airlines are still hiring. There's still people hiring right now. If you need a job, right? Airlines are hiring like crazy. Um, you know, diner service industry stuff, right? Um, jobs that people don't really want, right? <laughs> right? Nobody watching this wants to be a goddamn plain waitress. I think we should change the name stewardess to plain waitress, right? Think about it, right? I, I tell them exactly what I want. They come bring it to me. That's a waitress, right? But she's on a plane, plain waitress. I also think airports should be called plain stations. Think about it. bus station, train station, airport. No, nah, man, it's a plane station. I want you guys to start using that vernacular. Yeah, incorporate that into your everyday vernacular. I want to see it catch on. Those are, those are your mission. That's your mission, right? I like to see that happen by the end of the year. Let's spread that throughout the ethos. Anyway, what were we talking about? Right, layoffs. <laughs> so people are getting laid off left and right. And, you know, it's a recession, man. It's, it's, we're, I mean, technically we're in it, but it's, it's, it's going to get worse. So what, what can you do to survive this, right? So let's say you have a job. Step one, number first thing you need to do all right. All right. First thing you need to do is get side. Ch oh, I'm sorry. Hustle. <laughs> I'll do that just to be funny, baby. I was just for them. Hustle. Feel hustle, right? Yeah. Nice. Get you a side hustle, right? You don't, if you, Job stands for just over broke, right? If you only have one income source, then you're super vulnerable, right? Somebody could just fire you at any moment, right? So you always got to be having a way to make additional income. This way, if you do get laid off, you do get fired or, you know, wh whatever the case may be. And, you know, there's going to be a lot of layoffs, man, this year. We're just getting started. You got to have something else going on on the side to make sure you can still support yourself your family right i recommend you start some sort of side hustle that's in the service industry right you can start some sort of you can eat okay let me take that back you can start some sort of business right i, I preferably something in the service preferably some type of service-based business right this way you know, service businesses have way less overhead and are easier to start right because it, it relies on you doing shit for people right um, these are like online personal trainer, right? If you know how to do taxes, you can do taxes for people. You can do accounting. You know, I think you, there's a lot of stuff you can, you, you can write copy, right? You got to learn how to market and, and stuff like that, but you can run ads for other people, right? Whatever you want to do something on the side, you can't just have one income source, right? Number two. Stack money. 
right? What I mean by that is you want to have a six months of savings, right? Six months of your expenses saved up, right? Um, a lot of people speak against this kind of stuff, like the real entrepreneur guys, the guys who are like, no, nah, man, just balls to the wall. Yeah, maybe if you're just a guy, you don't have a family and nobody depends on you, you could do that. But I. Stacked up. What's up? Can you repeat the just the last 10 seconds? Oh, I don't know what I said. Oh, cool. Let me I'll say something else then. Right. You want to make sure you have at least six months of savings saved up, right? Because you know, if if shit hits the fan, six months is more than enough time to get back on your feet, right? This is like a safety net, right? I still maintain that right now, right? At my at my level, you know, because she can go left, right? She she can go left, right? And number three, I think it's super important that you, honestly, man, like, sorry, let's call this cut spending. I say cut spending. I don't mean be cheap. I don't mean out here cutting coupons, but, you know, It's, it's it's super important that you like to stack as much money as possible right now. Not only do you, not only for that six months of savings, but here's the thing: when the recession hits, you want to have disposable income because all the assets will be on sale, right? So now you can actually come up, right? If you have an, a nice stack of money, right? Boom, the real estate's gonna be on sale, right? The stocks are gonna be on sale. Crypto, if that's your jam, right? Crypto is going to be on sale and you can buy it at cheap prices. And then as it, when it goes back up, you can reap those benefits, right? So I've been in super stack mode right now. Like I have cut my spending dramatically. You may be like, but Brandon, I follow you on Instagram. In Keto. So you find all around the country on a consistent basis, first class and shit, man. What do you mean you couldn't spend it? Ah, those is Amazon. I mean, those are Amex points, bro. All them flights and hotels, hotel suites and shit, all that shit's been free, right? Because <laughs> I've been stacking up my Amex points, man. <laughs> you know, I, I spent a lot of money on, Am on, on Amex, right? So I got like more points than I can spend. So I haven't really deviated from my lifestyle much, right? I'm just not buying a bunch of shit right now because I'm stacking all the money, man. I'm stacking money up crazy. I told myself, no more jewelry, no more diamond watches <laughs> for the next six months. All right, one is one is probably enough. One is probably enough for now. For now, right? And you really want to just put yourself in a position to, to, to come up when it's time. And we're going to help you do that, you know, here at Victory Talk and in the Victory Unit, the Discord, right? When it's time to pull the trigger, right? And you have all this money. I want you to think of the money like ammo. You gathering up ammo. And then we're going to tell you where, when and where to pull the trigger. At. And you're going to make so much money. Right? I've been waiting for this for like 14 years, 14, 15 years. Ever since 2008, I didn't have the cash during that recession. If I did, though, if I had as much money then as I do now, I, <laughs> I don't know. I've been waiting this for my whole life. Because you're going to make so much money during the recessions if you have money, right? You got to have money to make money during a recession, okay? And I think it's, uh, you need to stack as much as possible. So, so here, here it is again, right? Get you a side hustle, right? This is going to protect you in case you get laid off, fired, or if you have a business, if business gets crazy. If you, if you have a business, you don't need a side hustle, your, your business is your business. We get a side going to stack more. This is going to also help you stack more money, help you get that six months of savings, right? Boom. And then you don't touch that. You to keep that on the side, right? And then you cut spending as much as you can, right? Because you need to be stacking. Like we're gathering up ammo for war. Right? We gather, I want you to think of every dollar like a bullet. And then we need to put down the enemies. The enemy is poverty. The, en the enemy is mediocrity, right? The enemy is failure, right? And we're gonna have enough bullets to blah, knock, blah, blah, knock them all down. All right. 
it's critical, critical step. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you join the victory unit. Link in the description. I also have pinned it in the top of the comments. Come so on, man. Just tap it. Top of the comments, right? Join that victory unit, man. We a few thousand members strong, right? We and the victory unit is all about muscle. You're building your muscle, building, getting your money right and your mindset right. Cool, man. Any uh, any chats we need to? Yes, actually. Because Romulus, you gave Romulus the link. Right? Yeah, yeah, I okay, cool. got it. We have three super chats. Hey, me and more. It's been a while. <laughs> Big T, why mm. don't you eat carbs? I don't eat carbs. Well, I do this diet called the ketogenic diet. I don't talk about it a lot, right? <laughs> but I do, I do a diet called the ketogenic diet. Um, I have some. I might have some videos about it on YouTube about the benefits I experience, but it's not for everybody. You know, I'm not one of these guys who are evangelists trying to get everybody not to eat cars. I don't give a fuck what you eat. You eat whatever you want, and I'll never know about it. <laughs> cool. <laughs> but I, I don't eat cars for a variety of reasons that I detail in other videos, man. But shout out for that. Shout out for that chat. We have <laughs> DL Saints. I really want to know podcasts. Okay. What's good, brother? I found you through Fresh and Fit. Mm. Salute to you. I agree with you 100%. The tough times are just starting. Keep leading from the front, brother. Mm. Yo, shout out to you, DL Saint. I really want to know podcast. Shout out to you, man. That's a long name. I, and I, I He had it as his name. I'm assuming he wanted me to say the whole thing. Kind of like a tribe called Quest. Like you got to say the whole thing. Or like <laughs> Wu-Tang Clan. You got to say the whole fucking thing, you know? I like that. I like his name is a sentence. That's dope. I, I, if I could do it over again, man, I wish my, if I could have picked my name, my name would have been a real nigga named Brandon Carter, right? That would have been my name. Like a whole sentence. You would have to say that, you know? Who's <laughs> They'd be, I'd be in class back in Chicago. They'd be taking attendance like in fifth grade. Like, all right, uh, the Lantre here. Okay. Um, Quavon. Okay. There you go. Lucretia. Okay. Um, a real last nigga named Brandon. Okay. Present. <laughs> That's what it would have sounded like. <laughs> what else we got? We have Holden's podcast. Oh, okay. Motherfuckers are shouting out their podcast. And the is this a is this a well, is this a podcast marketing tactic that I don't know about? That I don't know about. Am I y'all are y'all teaching me a marketing lesson? All right, let's go, man. Hoden's podcast. What up? About to be 18. My mentor says he can get me to 10 KM 118. Can you help me make an Instagram social media to make money modeling? <laughs> make money modeling. Um, I'm assuming you're a man. Uh which it would limit we would put some limitations on your on your <laughs> which may put some limitations on the strategies you use, you know, depending on how comfortable you are, certain aspects of the internet, certain aspects of modeling, you know? <laughs> um, no, I don't think I can help you <laughs> like with that. I'm gonna be honest with you, man. That's not like my, um, that's not my skill set helping male models. And, you know, uh, y'all know I used to, I used to be a male model back when I was like young and beautiful, but it was before, Social media existed. I, you know, I, I did shit for Nike, Adidas, Should I Puma. Grab the what'd, you, what'd you say? Should I grab the magazine? Oh, you would grab the magazine. I right, grab, grab, grab. If you can find the one with Hove on the cover, that's the only one. That's the only one that matters. You know what I'm saying? Gracias, me more. Uh, let's, let's, while she's looking for that, while she's looking for those relics of my past, while she's looking for a 20 year old magazine. Um, what else? <laughs> what else? Is there any other chat? Yeah, we got Sharon. Hey, girl. Finney. Yeah. Dropped in 10 bucks. Mm. Sharon Love. Hey, man, the sick. You know what I'm saying? I was actually raised by a black woman, so I appreciate you. <laughs> I think I think we're good. Well, actually, my mama sent me to military school. She kind of outsourced the whole like child raising thing. It was cool. It worked out. You know, different strategies. <laughs> I don't blame her. I'd have sent me away too. I was a wild young man. That's it. Yeah, that's it for now. Mm. Mm. Now we just waiting for Romulus. 
Yeah, he's like, we're waiting for the home. Oh, hold up. Oh shit, she found all right. So cool, man. Yo, back when I was back, this is back when I was young and beautiful, man. This is for uh so this is it this is Hove on double XL. Let me show you something, man. This is back when I was young and beautiful, man. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, double XL magazine. And I had this ill campaign. I was in this campaign for this clothing line that doesn't exist anymore. Is it in here? Oh man. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to find it. Ah, man, yo, this is—I know the suspense is killing you. Just hold on. Oh, boom! It, it, you see me wearing. So this is a clothing line called Academics. Back in the day, man, I know these shoes are ugly, right? And I'm over here. Like, that's what I'm thinking. Like, man, these some ugly ass shoes, man. But look, <laughs> but you know, I got paid. I was on. I was on the buses. I had a big fucking billboard, and um. I was on a big ass billboard on uh, 125th in St. Nick. I was king of the hood. <laughs> I was king of the hood for a fucking month, right? Oh, here, here's another one. Boom. This is this is the homie 50 and Eminem. This is Vibe magazine. Bam! There you go, your boy King Keto. Man, this is back. What year is this? All right, this is 2006. Back when I was young and beautiful, man. Made a lot of money. That <laughs> a lot of money. And then there's another one here. There's one more. We got one more vibe magazine with your boy in it. Oh, I don't know where it is. Yeah, that was back in the day. They got two more super chats. Oh, what's up, man? What are they talking about? We have Sharon. Uh, we, we did this one. Oh, we, we are. We are. I think we already did. We already did. We already did the sister. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, why, why you was getting the magazines? Well, we got Ryan. Hey, big Ryan, what up? <laughs> I'm almost at 20K a month. All right. 60 to 70% profit margin. All right. The net profit margin is looking more like 40%. All right. Do you have any tricks to increase? All right. Boom. He, my man want to increase his profits. He want to increase his profits. All right. Oh, okay. You know, let's hold that. Let's hold that. Because, man, we got a special guest. I'm going to get to you, Ryan. But I, I can go deep on that subject. Pause. Right now, we need to have market recap. <laughs> Romulus, what up, player? Hey, 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 everybody. <laughs> Glad to have you. Glad to have you. back again. And always excited, Brandon. Thank you so much for the opportunity to spend a little time with some uh, people that are heck trying to go out there and conquer the world, joining the victory. On, and by the way, please, everybody listening, paying attention out there, come into our Discord. That's where you're going to find all the action every single day. For we're real. talking about markets. We're talking about stocks. We're talking about helping you guys make money. And this is happening all the time. As a matter of fact, last couple of days, we have done just a – it feels like one no – Mess, no stress, trade after another, Brandon, doesn't it? And there's been some good trades way. lately, man. There's been some good trades. It, it is the thing. It's no mess, no stress. Yeah. A little trade, takes you 30 seconds, go back to doing whatever it is you're doing. And by the way, whatever it is you're doing, better be something to improve yourself. Come on, man. It better be. <laughs> Instead of sitting it better there. better be. <laughs> somebody else get it all. Come on, man. <laughs> we're the ones getting it all. So, yeah, we're going to go into a little bit of market recap real quick, though. I want to tell a story this okay. morning. You know, Brandon, like you, I'm out and about doing things, meeting people, mixing it up, trying to uh, spread the word and grow the uh, the Victory Unit Empire. Mm -hmm. Today, earlier, I was in a group. There was some people talking about businesses that they're in. Guy who works at a bank, he's a loan officer, so he gets in front of the crowd. Does it work at uh, you know Jerk Me Off Bank, whatever? <laughs> he's out there talking about uh, loan officing and trying to get people to take mortgages. I understand people want to get a mortgage to buy a house. Houses are expensive, although inherently. It's not really part of what I'm doing over here or right. what people should be looking at. Why? Because you spend a lot of money, you get nothing for it. Okay. It's a mm. consumer item. That's what people lose sight of. They think it's an investment. In fact, houses are not investments. Okay. I don't think they're good investments firstly either. You know, they're not. I mean, I'm, I'm not talking about if you buy one to rent it out. I'm talking about if you no, buy it cool. to live in it. Okay. Yeah. If you buy it and live it, because you're going to spend all kinds of money. You know, the wife comes home and she says, Oh, I want all the shrubs redone. And I want the kitchen redone. You're like, I'm selling 50 grand. What the heck is that all about, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, and then like all the money you could have, you know, just you got to put twenty percent down. The opportunity cost there, exactly. 
Exactly. And by the way, do people know what opportunity cost is? We'll, we can get to that. If you don't know, if you want to know more about that, we can cover it before I skip out of here for the night. Go ahead and put it in the chat or the, the speaker or however you guys communicate with this thing. Mm -hmm, anyway, mm -hmm. so this loan officer is up there talking about trying to get people to take mortgages out. And then he's talking about refinancing. Well, first of all, how are we going to refinance? Interest rates are at the highest point they've been at in 16 years. So that's off the table. But, yeah. you know, he doesn't care about that. Then he says, well, why don't you guys take out a second mortgage to go fix your kitchen? Fix your kitchen. Wait, wait, time out a minute. Time out. We live in modern day America, Brandon. How mm -hmm. many people do you know that live in a place that don't have working kitchens? <laughs> no, I mean, everybody's kitchen work. It works, right? It cooks <laughs> the food. The fridge yeah. keeps it cold. You're in there operating. Does anyone listening to this getting sick from the food that they're storing and preparing in their own kitchens right now? Is anyone nah, getting, man. Is getting the sick? The refrigerator is working just fine. Right. And how many people in this in this call right now are, paying, are worth 10 million or more? Okay. Mm. It might and be no one, one, too, man. Right. The, no one other than those <laughs> people should be taking a, a second mortgage out to go fix your damn kitchen. Nah, okay. Man. So he was trying Put to get people heads. to get these mortgages. Man. I mean, really, it's ridiculous. This guy is out there talking with a straight face, and I mm. felt like choking him. Yeah, choking him. It's just ridiculous how the money. And this is something that's so ingrained with everybody. Anyway, I do digress a little bit there, and uh. I appreciate everybody hanging on for that story. I'm passionate about this. Many years ago, it's been a while, but many years ago, that's not how I operated. Okay, I mm. stuffed my trading accounts as much money as I possibly could all the time, mm. all the time. I'll tell you another quick idea. Okay. If I look, there was money. I, I had a job, so I had income. We all have jobs. The job mm. market is hot as a pistol. Still. We all have yeah. jobs out there. Okay. A lot you of jobs. Work, out there right now. You can find work and you should be working. So I had a job. And if I had, if I was invited to go somewhere, so Super Bowl's coming up on Sunday, people can go out to the game they can go to a bar. They're going to go to friends. They're going to spend money on drinks and food and getting yeah. together and doing some things and partying. That's going to happen this weekend. It's one of the bigger drinking weekends of the year. Okay? For sure. All right. So, Brandon, if, I, if you say to me, hey, Ramos, why don't we go out to the bar? Got a couple of the fellas. Meet us over there. I say, all right. We'll be there for a couple of hours. I'll spend 200 bucks. right? That, that's mm -hmm. reasonable. All right. We're just going to a bar. We're not going to a fancy Ruth Chris steakhouse dinner. We're going to a bar. 200 bucks. Mm -hmm. well, what about this? And I know I got the money. Because I've got a job and I've got my income coming in. Everybody. What if I say, well, you know what? I know I can spend 200, but let's do this right now. I'll spend 150 and I'll immediately take 50 bucks and put it in my trading account. Like right this second. Yeah, yeah right. that's what I was talking about. Like like guys got to stack money, man. Like in right now. expenses a little bit right now. Because now yeah. it's going to really stack money, you know? Right now. Put it in my account right now. And I can I, I can spend 150 bucks. That's still a good time. I'm not really robbing myself. Yeah. I'm staying home. I'm still out there doing things, mixing it up, meeting people, getting out and about. But I'm, I put some money in my do that with everything in life. Like every day mm. you should say to yourself, you know what? There's five bucks. There's 300 bucks. There's a thousand dollars. There's 20 bucks. You do that every single day of your life. You will see your account grow because you're trading well. And that is if yep. you're getting into the discord, you're paying attention to what we're doing in the victory unit. Come on, man. And you're finding ways to stuff your accounts. Trust me on this. Years ago, Bill Gates, look, he's had a lot of money for a very long time. Okay. A long time. But in the early and even middle days of Microsoft growth, the guy was still flying coach when he could have afforded to buy the entire airline. Mm. Like he could have afforded to buy United Airlines yeah. and he was flying coach. That's a different level. All right. It's a different level. And now the guy does what he wants when he wants. And what he wants to do is go out there and help people. Yeah. Okay? Whether you agree or disagree with his policy, that's not what I'm talking about. He's helping people. Yeah. Right. That's what you, do. you know, I yeah. was in, I was in, Cayman Islands, and I was in this, like the Stingray place, distinguish it, and oh, so we was cool. with a guy. Things. Yeah, yeah, I was in there with the Stingrays. This was like a few years ago, and I looked up and I was like, "Man, I didn't know cruise ships can come to this part of the island. I didn't know they came here." And then the guy was like, "No, nah, man, that's not a cruise ship. That's Paul Allen's <laughs> yacht. Yeah. yeah, Paul Allen is like the number two guy in Microsoft. You know, at one point, three hundred foot long boat and yeah, 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 yeah. On yeah. The back you know, so they, they, they those boats. Microsoft boys did pretty well for themselves." Yeah, look, Paul Allen. I mean, yeah, Paul Allen, <laughs> the other guy from uh, the, from from Apple, Steve Wozniak. The guy, yeah, the second bananas in there. They did well, and all these guys. I mean, they 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 put their money away. They stuffed it into their into their companies. Okay, they reinvested. Yeah. And now's the, the time to do that because, like you tell me, I mean, you've been telling me to just, you know, Back some stuff up. we've been talking about. Some of the ways we're going to be taking advantage of things that are coming up pretty soon. You know. Yeah, yeah, and we're doing it. I mean, we're we're yeah, we're doing as, it now. I say to people. 
people who are, are in our, our victory unit legion, okay? That's what mm -hmm. we call it. So victory unit, people who are in our legion, our centurions in our legion, they get these trade alerts. And you know, hold up your phone, right? Hold up your phone real quick. So they get these trade alerts that are yeah. sent right to their phone. Just text it. There yeah. it is. And it takes 30 seconds to read the text. Okay, Romulus says buy this. Okay, bop, bop, bop. Boom. Open Robinhood, open Webull, open Interactive Broker, hit enter, done. And now yeah. go back to doing other things that you're trying to do to improve yourself. Like I said, that's it. These guys are getting winning trades all the time. Okay, winning trade after winning trade after winning trade. So I asked them, you guys have been with me for a month, two months, two years, two and a half years. You are in there making money on all these trades. Why wouldn't you try to jam that account with as much money as you can? You feel me? Like I did it the other day, man. You you had this call, you the uh, you UNG call. Oh, that's right. nice, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, sure. you know. Now I'm gonna be honest with you. I held it a little longer. I'm still holding it. I'll right. show you. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, you can show it. So yeah. like this one, like this is a trade you gave me, but I don't know. I looked at the chart and I decided, yeah, I'll just hold it a little bit longer. You know yeah. And it's up 15. percent You know, this this right. one trade. You know, this is one one example. You know, and one yeah, from so this I mean, week. We made nice little, nice money on Come that on. trade. And um, here I got my screen up. If you want to show that. Yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah, there you go. Okay. This is what he's talking about, UNG. Okay. So indicators are low. Everything is oversold. Things have been getting beat up for quite a long time. We've stepped in here a couple of times in the last uh, few weeks or yeah. so and made money. The other day, we bought it right down here. A couple of trading days before we bought it here. I think we've done it over here as well. And we just keep picking it off. Okay. We're into it. Then a day, two, three, four days later, we're back out of it. It's like no mess, no stress. Okay. Yeah. It's just nice and calm, nice and easy. And it adds to your account. You're not freaking out about this. You're not overboard on it. You're not getting all emotionally tied up about it. And by the way, all you need to be able to do to do this type of trading is read a text, yeah. open your Webull account, and enter buy. Webull, Robinhood, any of that. Or push sell. If, if you can do that, then you can trade with us. That's Let me ask you a question, do. man. You know, uh, what do you, what, can, can you just go over spy a little bit? Cause it's telling me what's happening with the, with the, with the brawl mark. Cause I, I, this is something I really want to know. I missed the Thursday night live that you do uh, for the Legion. Yeah. So like, if you can get me up to speed, at least a little, uh, what, what you, yeah, what you don't, play, what, you, you don't what you miss too many Thursday night lives. We do a session every Thursday in the afternoon mm -hmm. for about an hour, hour and a half with our centurions, our, uh, our victory unit Legion. And we talk, we analyze markets in a way that the professionals do And You can't find the stuff anywhere else in the world that I promise you. Yeah. Right, so here's the market today, a little bit of a, a sell off the last couple of days. And if you, again, you see, look, remember this right here. Okay. Right in there. Mm -hmm. This is after Powell's talking after federal reserve uh, announcements with their interest rate hike. And this is the, the, the epitome of a federal reserve credit crack. Okay. Mm -hmm. They're trying to convince everybody everything's fine and the world takes it for uh, what they think it's worth. And everybody's saying, hey, we got the whole credit cycle happening again. We're going to flood the markets with a bunch of cash by the end of the year. But we knew, we knew better. This is where we went. This is where we bet against the market mm. right there that very day. This is at the, the epitome. This is at the height of short term optimism. Yeah. Okay? And then you sold it. We sold the, the, the very next day. Yeah. We, we got, we, we shorted here. We bet against the market and we make our money here. Okay. And we started going long a couple of things just down in here. We yeah. went along this, okay? We went along this. You see these green candles. We made money yeah. on all these trades. So back to the S&P 500. It is up, but you see how it's having trouble right at that line. This line mm. goes back a long time. Okay, this is an ancient line. I'm not talking about ancient Rome, but I mean in market history. How far does that line go back? Wow. Um, you know, look, let's tear into it, okay? We'll shrink it down a bit. It does go back a long way. Look at that. You see this? Oh, so that's been a, like a strong look, support of uh, a strong level of support and resistance for a long time. So you're talking 23 months. Uh, 22 oh, wow. months. Okay. 22 months of this line is either held or rejected market moves. Or yeah. Held or rejected market moves. So now this we're going to see what it does moves. here. Now it's right at the line. It's right at the line. It looks like it might be rejecting another market move. At least it has so far. Yeah. Okay? And so a play like this is, will it, will it not reject it this time? A little hard to tell. That's okay. We have mm -hmm. ways to play all this. Yeah. Without putting ourselves out on the risk spectrum and make sure that no matter what happens, whether it jumps above the line and keeps going, we make money. Whether it gets mm -hmm. rejected, we make money. We call this profiting regardless of market direction. Yeah. And that's what we do around here. We profit regardless of market direction. And that's what we want for you as well. We can help you do that. Okay. So again, right at the line. So this is an area where you want to just watch and have some smaller trades on. It's a little bit uh, of an area of caution right now in, mm -hmm. uh, in this thing. Now, 
one thing about this Federal Reserve stuff, though, when they start passing out that credit crack, I'm going to caution the Fed about this because, and we've been writing about this the last three or four weeks, inflation's coming back already. Mm. Okay, Inflation's coming back already. We've been talking about the oil market. Here it is, two huge moves on the upside. This is not what the Fed wants. This is not what they need. We mm. can't have Americans paying four bucks, four fifty, five bucks a gallon of gas again like we were last year because that ruins everything. That takes the entire punch bowl away. But I see oil prices going back up. Not only that, I see interest rates going back up. Okay, mm. interest rates are not are not pulling back the way the Fed wants them to. Oh, that's a high that's a high base right there, right? Yeah, that's a high, another high base in there on the two year. Okay, it's kind of okay. cooling off a little bit in here. So right now, the whole thing hinges around: Are these rates going to keep going higher? Remains to be mm. seen. And are the indexes going to come back down below their December lows? Remains to be seen. So they're all kind of fighting each other right now. This is a battleground. Again, with battlegrounds, we want to step back a little bit. We want to have a, a cautious approach. We want to have a lot of cash to take advantage of other people's mistakes. And trust me on this one, in the next three or four days, billions of people with trillions of dollars are going to make massive mistakes. Got you. And we're just going to take that money. So if interest rates go up, the stocks will go down. For sure. They will. Absolutely. Why is that? Because you can go ahead and put your money in a very safe. This is the safe investment in the world, the U.S. two year. Okay? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can go out there and make almost four and a half percent a year for taking zero. I don't mean near zero risk. I mean, absolutely zero risk. Yeah. You can get four and a half percent a year for taking absolutely zero. No risk at all. No risk at all. And if rates keep going higher, are you going to get this rate or are you going to take a chance on Apple, which might make you five percent a year, but you're taking a massive amount of risk? What are you going to do? Mm. See, now we have earnings this week too, right? Like uh, a lot most, of the big, most of the big earnings are here and gone. They started okay. the banks, they move into the techs. All the big tech companies are gone. You do have some stragglers and after uh, after typical areas like Nvidia is coming out, but the Teslas, Microsofts, uh, the bigger companies are all here and gone. And I would tell you this too. This is look at this. I want to show everybody this too here. Let's go to the S and P five hundred. So look at this. You've got this support line over here. Okay. This dates back to the mid-October low. See that right mm -hmm. there? All right. That dates back to mid-October. This is the line that was in place since early last year. It mm -hmm. broke above there. Here's the 200-day, the thicker red line. So not uncommon that within weeks or months after this kind of thing happens for a retest to take place. Mm -hmm. All right. Now you've got all these lines kind of hanging around. I mean, I can even extend this higher that over the next few weeks, they'll be getting close to each other. Okay. Mm. They'll be getting close to each other. And you've got these moving averages right here as well. So you're so, expecting the, the, you think this is a, a, a probability of a, a retest of, of those? Probability of a retest plus if it does get down here, I would fully expect to see this is an area where the bulls are going to have to put on a show. Mm. And so they're going to at least, at least enough to make a trade on the upside. And then we'll have to see if they can follow through. They're going to have to put on a show if the market pulls back in here over the next you know, four or five days or four or five weeks. Gotcha. You're going to have to step in there because if it, if it doesn't hold, then I'd say this whole entire move is uh, at risk of coming undone. Really? Okay. Yeah. All right. So, and if it does hold, well, we know what to buy. There's already evidence. The seeds have already been planted. I mean, I can get into that now if you want to. Yeah. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. Okay. So everybody's looking at the markets. Hey, markets are up last uh, almost four months from the October lows. So let's go out there and buy tech. Go out there and buy. You know what though? The tech and the riskier assets, they're not the ones that are doing as well. Okay? Mm. You know what's doing better? Good old fashioned industrial stocks. Really? Because our people aren't thinking about these things. That's okay. a better looking chart if I was looking to buy right now. Yeah. Caterpillars pull back constructively. Boeing's pulling well right back up. I mean, I thought it kept that's a nice high up. base on Boeing. We got we gotta watch that Boeing. for tomorrow, right? Right. So you yeah, you've got actionable ideas right now in areas where most people who you know, come to YouTube and those kind of places for trading ideas or look to improve their market uh, skills are not thinking or looking at, okay? They're just so locked into Tesla, okay? They're so locked into the same tech stuff that they've been dealing with for years and years. You don't, you don't want to think like that because you're thinking like everybody else. Probably That's not a good looking this. chart, man. I would be scared to mess with that right now. <laughs> well, hell, Randy, you remember, we shorted it yesterday and made money. Yeah. We shorted it yesterday and made money on that stock. If it goes up again tomorrow, which it probably would a little bit, I'd probably be shorting it again. Yeah. Okay? That's another actionable idea. I mean, we're loaded with stuff tonight, everybody. Hope you're yeah. enjoying that. <laughs> Hope that so watch XLI and Boeing, right? Boeing, those, yeah. Let's go back to it. Yeah, so here's Boeing. 
again, so a lot of people aren't looking at these kind of companies. They don't think about these kind of stocks. It never enters their mind to look at these kind of, these are the institutional world. This is where the bigger players are. Okay, but this is where they're making money. So mm. think of it, and there's a basket of all these XLI industrial basket. XLI, like yeah. That. XLI. Here's another one. Here's a basket of defense stocks. Look at that. Oh. And look at that little move. So you've got interesting things going on where you don't have to take all this risk in the tech space. And the tech space is still loaded with risk that you're not aware of. All right. Loaded with risk because that's where everybody is. Don't think like everybody else. Don't do what everyone else does. If you really want to make money in the markets, if you want to become Look, I think you were talking to Grant Cardone about this, and he brought something up that he took from Peter Thiel about the $10 million man, right? Mm. In order to make yourself bulletproof, and I've done a lot of thinking about this, a lot of analyzing on this. Yeah. If you want to make yourself the bulletproof man, if you want to become invincible, if you want to put yourself in a position where no matter what happens in the markets, the economy, the political situation at home or abroad, wars, peace, climate change, anything, if you want to make sure that you are protected, that you can take care of everybody around you at a moment's notice, $10 million is the new number. Mm. When I got in the business 28 years ago, it was 2 million. Now it's 10 million. Hey, inflation, mm. right? Okay. Inflation. So if you want to get there, you can't do what everybody else does. You can't think like everybody else. You've got to think, act, and, and believe different things. And that's what we're trying to tell you here. I like that's it, man. I like it. Yo, thank you, Romulus. I appreciate that. I mean, guys, make sure y'all, if you like this kind of analysis and you want to learn more about how to actually read these charts and how to make this money the way we have with the markets every day. Whether it's going yeah. up or down, you know, that's what we do in the victory unit. Join the join the discord. It's free. Yeah. Get in there. Join us. You can say hello to me. Say hello to Brandon. Say hello to Greg. The three of us are in there talking about yeah. these markets. I mean, again, when was the last time anybody out there told you to buy natural gas and showed you exactly how to do it? And it only took 20 seconds to get it done. You Come make on, money on a trade like that. You didn't hear that from money, anybody else. You Come on, man. Let's go. You you know, right yeah, shout out to Greg, too, man. He's, helped, he's been helping us a, a he's lot. He's been tremendous. Look, the team yeah. is in place. The support is there. The help is there. The, the positive reinforcement is there for you. It's all coming. We've got hundreds of centurions in 19 different countries from all over the world. What are they doing? Dominating the markets. They don't care what direction it goes in. We just keep making money. Yeah. yeah. Always, man. Thank you so much, Ramdas. I appreciate hey, that, brother. Way, before we kick off here, I know that you've got some other great things to talk about with uh, with your crowd, and uh -huh. I'm sure they better be appreciative. But a week from today is Valentine's Day. Okay, mm -hmm. a week from today is Valentine's Day. We yeah. get together every Tuesday night, you and I, roughly uh, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Uh -huh. A week from today at 8 p.m. Eastern time, I'll be with the lady. Uh, okay. I feel you, man. I feel yeah. you. I'll be with That's the cool, man. Hey, so Ram's not going to be here this week. If you want to, you have to join the victory unit. You know I'll, be there, I'll be there during the day, but I won't be out yeah. at night. We're going to get the uh, get in the coach. We're going to be heading out and about, painting the town all kinds of uh, colors. Come on, having man. ourselves a good uh, throwdown of a time. So that's fantastic, man. That's a that's a lucky lady right there. You yeah, know? And I'm, I, you know what? <laughs> when you get your money right, this is the kind of things you can do, and this is what we want for you. Come on, man. Shout out to you. Thank you so much, Romulus. Peace. <laughs> Also, speaking of Valentine's Day, are we, are we gonna have the podcast next? We're gonna have the podcast on Valentine's Day, man. We're you gonna we're, we're gonna have we're gonna have a podcast. You know, you know, Valentine's. You know, it's only two hours. You know what I'm saying? You can still you still have plenty of time for Valentine's Day. You still have plenty of time for Valentine's Day, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So so just come come check us out. You know what I'm saying? Are <laughs> right, you wanna go to next segment or do you want to answer the super chat? We got some super chats. Yep. Oh yeah, right, let's answer them. We forgot about Ryan. Oh, Ryan. All right, boom. Do you have any tricks to increase? Increase profit margin. All right, Ryan. Well, without knowing a lot about your business or industry or anything about what you do, <laughs> um, I'll get into some of this. Hold on for a second. Boom, 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 boom. You know what? Maybe today, maybe this would be the habits of a winner. I mean, let's get into it. So I got a question from a guy named Ryan. He said he's making about 20K a year, right? And he wants to know how he, I'm sorry, he's making about 20K a month with 60, 70% profit margins, right? He wants to know how, how he can increase his profit margins. And this will work with any business, right? So there's basically... Three ways to make more money in, in your business, right? One, you can sell more. 
Fillmore stuff. Right? Right? And what that looks like is, you know, just get out there and just sell more, increase your marketing, increase your sales percentage, you know. Uh, but that might not improve the margins, right? But it will improve business, right? Number two is, this is what you do, you know what I'm saying? Charge more. Right? Charge more, right? Boom. Increase prices. And that will definitely improve your profit margins, right? Now, sales may go down. You got to you gotta do math to see if you can actually um, accomplish that in, in a point where it makes sense, right? Um, and then number three is sell more to current customers. Right? Sell more to current customers. All right, so here's the thing. To get a customer, and this is what this is this is my favorite one. Number three is my favorite one, right? So what does that look like? All right, so you're on you did, the whole the whole game, the whole business game is is this. Co- sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. Ah. Cost of acquisition versus LTV, lifetime value. Right. So you ever watch Shark Shark Tank? They they'll say stuff like, "How much does it cost you to acquire a customer?" Right. Right. Boom. And then it's basically versus the lifetime value of that customer. And the lifetime value of the customer is basically when you once you have a customer throughout the whole the, throughout the, that that customer's um, how much money does that customer spend to with you? You know, the whole time it's it's working with you. Right. For example. Uh, Let's say you're an online trainer, boom, and your average cu- customers, your average client stays with you for 18 months, boom, and 18, and let's say you're charging $300 a month, real quick, 300 times 18, <laughs> somebody, I don't have my, cal- I need to start keeping my calculator here. It's going to be 5400 Right, so 50, so <laughs> that means your lifetime value of that customer would be 54 right? And so that means you can spend 5,400 of, you know, anything you spend under 5,400 to acquire a customer, you'll be profitable, right? That's the whole game. Lifetime value versus cost of acquisition, right? The beauty of selling more to your existing customers is you've already acquired them, right? So when you sell them more stuff, boom, you don't have to spend money to acquire them. And this raises your LTV, This raises your LTV. Now, I don't know exactly what kind of business my man had. But if you can find ways to sell them more stuff, right, you'll, it's going to drastically improve your margins because now you don't have to spend money to acquire that customer. They're already a customer, right? And it's easier to sell to people who you already sold to. Assuming you gave them a good experience, assuming what they bought was valuable, then they'll be a lot more eager to buy stuff from you, right? Because now they already trust you. They already know you. They trust you. They had a good experience with you. It's just like how it's easier to have sex with someone you've already had sex with. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that. I know how that sounds. And it might sound like I'm just trying to be funny, but I really feel like that illustrates the point, right? If you want to go out and have sex with a new person, you got to do take a lot of steps, right? But if somebody you're already having sex with, right, you just, you just text them. You up? <laughs> right it's so much easier right <laughs> same thing it's easier to sell to somebody who you already sold to right if they had a good experience you get what i'm saying and i think this is underutilized in a lot of like small businesses right a small business are just trying to get new customers trying to get new customers trying to get new customers but what they really need to be doing is increasing the lifetime value because they're instantly be more profitable you know that's that's something you I think that customers should really I, I think that's something that people should really focus on increasing the lifetime value, right? So how do you do that? There's a few different ways you can do that. One, you can, you know, um, 
You can have them upgrade to something new, right? All right, let's say you have an uh, online coaching business, right? You know, online training business, right? Maybe you can charge more for like, um, you know, more one-on-one time with you, right? Maybe more check-ins or something like that. I'm just thinking off the top of my head, right? So they can upgrade their current package, right? Or, you know, add-ons, right? You can se- you can sell them something up. Like if you sell multiple products, right, you can just try to keep adding stuff to it. For example, you know, I bought this iP- I bought this iPad Pro, you know, but then Apple came out with this fucking keyboard, right? The magic keyboard. All right, so I, so I get this shit, right? But then if I really want to do it, I also got to buy the pencil, right? So I really just wanted the iPad, but I ended up buying all types of other shit as well. Apple does a phenomenal job of this, right? Um, all right, so you can have add-ons. Boom. Also, right? You can you can you can sell you can you can sell um you can sell other people's products. Right? That's underutilized too, right? So let's say let's say you're a roofer, right? You out here roofing. Helping people with their rules and shit. I don't know what roof. I actually don't know what roofers do. I never lived in a house, but I know people be out here roofing, right? I've only <laughs> I've only lived in condos and penthouses and shit my whole life. Right? Um, let's say you're a roofer, right? You just roofed somebody's house, right? Boom, you can hit them up and say, "Hey, man, my my my, my homie, homie uh, Trayvon." Right, he's got a pl- a plumbing business, and he's offering discounts to to my roofing customers. I don't know if that's something you you're interested in or not, but you can get the it, whenever you need a plumber, just tell him you know Big Brandon, right, and he's gonna give you fifty percent off, right, something like that, right. And then you know there's a lot, there's a lot of opportunities for that, right. Sell other people's shit, right. I think they were selling Xbox controllers when I was in the Apple store the other day. Right, because they they're trying to really push this Apple Arcade shit, right? Because now you can link, you know, um, they sold Xbox controllers, right? They're fucking competitors, Microsoft. They're selling their controllers to oh man, if you buy an iPad, you know you, you want to play some of these games, man. You're gonna need the fucking controller, right? Those are three different ways to increase lifetime value, right? You can upgrade what they have, boom, you can add more shit, and you can sell other people's stuff too and get a commission off that. All those are easy ways to increase um lifetime value which will make your business a lot more profitable. We got, Boom! That's a video. Yep. We got more Super Chats? Or? Oh, shit! Yeah! Yes, we do. Let's go. We have one from Austin. Big Austin. I'm not planning on going to college. Okay. Can I still become successful through fitness-related jobs? I want to be a personal trainer someday. Yeah, listen. Listen, Austin. You don't... You that, first of all, shout out to you for that $4.99. You don't need college to be a personal trainer <laughs> for sure <laughs> you know like uh yeah yeah you could definitely be successful i mean i have students you know in, in my high ticket training program you know i got some you know i got 19 year old girls making 10k a month right so you know you, you definitely can you know you know what i'm saying um i really but you know i was, Okay, if I only cared about myself, I would just say, man, you need to join my program, man. I can show you how to do it. Do this mine instead of college. Truth is, man, your know, college is fun as fuck, bro. Like, I, don't, I feel like you're going to regret that. <laughs> like, I don't know. Uh, I would have regretted it, but I'm old, right? So the world is different now. I don't know if I can speak to it, but college was an amazing experience for me. I learned a lot. I had a ton of fun, made some friends who are with me for life. Um, it was it was a fantastic experience, you know, for me, right? And, and I would also say, if you know exactly what you're going to do and you know you don't need college for it, then all right, cool. But if you're on the internet asking tr- strangers in a tank top for life advice, then I don't know if I don't know if more education is going to be a bad thing for you. I'm going to be honest with you. If you're asking some random nigga with a tank top off the internet for life advice, man, yo, more education is probably good. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Is there any more? We got more? Yeah. 
<laughs> Let's get it. We have Nate. Any tips on getting abs to show? I, I, I hope that's not Nate's profile picture. Because if so, man, the answer to this question is going to take a lot longer than we have than the time allotted. Right. Um, most listen, everybody wants to get the abs to show. You just got fat on them abs, bro. I don't think that's Nate's profile picture. I think that's that's he put that there for comedic effect. Thanks for the thanks for the two dollars. Um, but yeah, listen, everybody has abdominal muscles, right? Some are more defined than others, right? But um, some are more pronounced than others. But if you just got ripped, you just you just you just got too much fat, right? You can't lose fat in one spot, right? Don't think doing country is going to give you abs. Losing fat is going to get you abs, right? People say abs are made in the kitchen. I really don't like when people say that, but I know what they mean, right? Because diet is most important. The reason I don't like when they say abs are made in the kitchen is because what they were trying to say is you need to lose fat, right? And diet is important, right? But you have to restrict calories. So the truth is abs are made by being in the kitchen less, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Unless you're doing sit-ups, crunches, and hit cardio next to your stove, you are not making abs in the kitchen, right? It means they come from being in the kitchen less. But I know what they mean when they say that. That's why I ain't never punched nobody for saying it. They may well. What else we got? <laughs> Don't you have a video on abs as well? I, I might. You know what, man? If you look on YouTube, there might be one or two videos about abs. So if you like... Abs, Brandon Carter. I think a video may come up if you type Brandon Carter abs in the internet. I'm not sure. I know. I know you have a whole bunch of workouts. I might have. I might have one or two ab workouts. Like I might have done that in the past. I'm not sure. Money motivated. Mm, money money motivated. motivated. What's up? Money motivated said BBC. Mm. How do I write a business plan? Mm. What does it mean to evaluate the market for the business I'm trying to start? How do I do it? I've never wrote okay. a business plan. In my whole fucking life, I've never wrote a business plan. It, I mean, I've planned shit out, but I've never wrote like an official white man business plan shit. <laughs> like I, I never, I, I never did that shit. Not once. Um, you need a plan. I think I talked in another one of these about like how to make a a plan for your goals. Right, you definitely need a plan, but like an official business plan are kind of fucking useless, bro. Like, like the real business plan, the way they teach you in business school is kind of useless. Don't worry about it. Unless you're trying to get a loan or something or some sort of, but I never did that. I always like just fucking bootstrapped. Mm. According to Kyler, you do have an average. Really? You know, I, I mean, I'd be doing so much shit. I'd be forgetting about stuff, man. I, I do have ad videos. Okay, that's good to know. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> good to know. That's good to know. No. Nah. Money motivated has it's back in two his more bitch. questions. Mm. Three more questions. From your perspective, what makes a psychologically strong person? What are the distinguishing qualities? How does one become one? Mm. As a man, you have to be mentally strong. You have to be tough. It's very important because life is hard. Life is difficult. And the more prepared you are to face that difficulty, right, the more you will ascend above other men. And if you're weak, right, life's going to eat you up, chew you out. Life's going to eat you up and spit you out, and you'll never really succeed, and you'll be become resentful and 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 pessim pessimistic, and that's how haters are made, right? So check this out. Check this out. Boom. How do I get rid of this thing? Uh, all right, cool. All right, so this is, this line represents difficulty of life. This line represents time, okay? When you're born, Life is super easy. Everybody's doing everything for you. You take a shit all on yourself. Somebody comes and cleans it up. You're hungry. You just cry. They come bring you food. You know, your mom put a titty in her man, your mouth, man, give you some food. It's so you don't have to worry about shit. Nothing. Everything's taken care of. Right. And then at some point. It's like then your parents tell you some point your parents tell you 
hey man, you gotta stop shitting on your pants, right? We want you to shit in this toilet. It's potty. And you're like, what the fuck? Now you got responsibility and shit. Right now you got to do shit. So life, the difficulty of life has increased a little bit. You know, let's make this red. Has increased a little bit. And then next thing you know, you got to go to school. You got to start sharing your toys. Right? You got to like listen to a teacher. Right? You got to, wait a minute, you, you, they giving you tests and shit? You got to be places at a certain time? You got to wake up at a certain time? Right? Life just it gets a little bit. Then you're in high school. Right? And then that has its own challenges. Um... You know, you got to you got to get good grades and you go to college. Right. You got to dress cool. Right. So you're so you have friends. Right. You got to make sure you you shoot the ops when you come. Uh, well, that was my high school. I don't know if y'all had that same experience. Um, <laughs> I'm from Chicago. It's a little different. Right. Um, but life just keeps getting harder. Right. Then college. Then next thing you know, you're a fucking adult and you got bills and shit. Right. And it just keeps it keeps getting harder. Life keeps getting harder as you age right that's why when kids talk about life is so hard i was like motherfucker wait till you got bills and shit wait till you got a family motherfucker this is gonna be easy now this line is gonna rep- this represent skills right in the beginning you got no skills but it's cool now what you want to be doing is improving your skill set <laughs> you want to be improving your skill set so it's faster than the rate that life gets difficult Right. And it, and what you really want is to keep, do it so much that, boom, by the time you're, you know, an adult, life is so much easier for you than it is for everyone else. Right. Now you're making more money. You got, you know, women is fighting over you. You need thought repellent. You need thought repellent, man, because you got so much money and you're balling. You out here crushing life. Right. What happens to a lot of guys, though, is. They don't improve. You ever see the guy who peaks in high school, right? Boom. And then the shit just goes down and he doesn't get any better. And then what? But life keeps getting harder. Life is getting harder. These motherfuckers kill themselves. You know what I'm saying? Or these, or they, they have a sad existence, right? So you got to keep improving, right? Because life keeps getting harder as you age, right? Because you have more responsibilities. You got to keep getting better and better and better. And you got to focus on getting better every day. If you're not getting better, you're getting worse. This is why. Because life gets harder as you age. You know what I mean? You have more responsibilities. More shit's going on. So you got to keep getting better and better. All right? That's step one. Constant improvement. Step two. Step two is you got to be stoic. Right? You got to have emotional control. All right? When everybody's panicking, flipping out, going crazy, you got to be calm. It's very important for men to control their emotions. Right? Because we have testosterone. Testosterone makes you, makes you one, it makes you strong, right? So if you don't have con- control of your emotions and some girl starts like acting crazy, you know, that's what, that's how Chris Brown ruined his career, right? He had no control over his emotions, right? And, um, you know, I've been hit by women, but I had emotional control and I was able to, you know what? Chris Brown taught me I can't fight back. That's what I learned from Chris Brown. Right, so shout out to him. <laughs> I can... I control my emotions, and I, you know, nothing, shit didn't go wrong. Even though I was attacked physically by a woman, right? You know, and it's like that with everything, though, right? You can't never be go off the handle. You got to be super calm, tranquilo, right? And you got to be able to manage your emotions. You got to be stoic. What that looks like in practice is. You know, no matter how bad things get, I, I stay as calm. Like, all right, let's just, let's just handle it. You know, we are, we are. Let's handle it. But it's also you can't get too excited when things go good, right? Because success is more dangerous than failure, right? Because with success, what happens is you can start getting full of yourself, thinking you're the man. You think your shit don't sting. Is you think that you can't make any mistakes, right? You think shit is always going to go right for you, and then you're surprised when it doesn't. It catches you off guard, and you weren't prepared for it. Right. So you got to stay real calm. Right. For example. I'm only saying this for the for the video. Right. To to, to illustrate the point. I just hit a million followers on Instagram. I ain't say nothing to nobody. My girl's like, oh, you hit a million. I'm like, oh, that's what's up. 
you know, when it worked out, you know what I'm saying? Like you can't, I'm not saying that don't celebrate things. You know, I, you know, I celebrated when my son graduated from kindergarten and shit like that, but I, 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 I don't really celebrate my own accomplishments too much. Right. Cause I'm never trying to get too high on my high horse and I'm never trying to get too low. I want to say super stable, super stable emotionally. Right. Stoic. And think about it, man. If you were in a dangerous situation and there's two friends you could pick to go with you, do you want the guy who's all over the place emotionally or do you want the person who's steady, calm, knows what to do at all times? You got to be him. Right. So you got to be super just emotionally stable. Right. That comes from practice. That comes from practice. There's a lot of things you can do to cultivate that. Uh, What's helped me the most is meditation. Right. Um, I have a video about meditation. Maybe we'll put that somewhere where they, they can find it. Um, but my man, my, my my role model, Ray Ray Dalio, Lil Ray Ray is what we call him. You know, but Ray Dalio, one of the richest men in the world, founder of, of uh, um, Bridgewater Capital, most successful hedge fund of all time. He he attributes a, a lot of his success to his meditation practice, right? Because you got to think he's moving around literally billions of dollars worth of assets, and and they're coming from big funds like pension funds. And, you know, these are people's retirement funds. They're like they, that money means something to these people. And that's a lot of pressure. But because he's meditated for decades, he's a lot calmer in those situations. You know, and it's, he attributes a lot of success to that. Right? And the third thing you need to do to become emotionally strong, you know, is, is never complain. No, seriously, never complain about anything right if it's raining <laughs> cool man it's just, it's just raining you know so it's cool you know like if, if you're if you got a toothache right you <laughs> nothing never complain about anything never complain about the government never complain about the recession never complain about you know anything that's going on right because it's, it's complaining means one of two things. It means either you're there's a problem that you're not strong enough to handle, right? Or you're not willing to accept reality. Like if that's what it is, that's what it is, right? How do we deal with it, right? So the act of complaining is really reserved for the weak, right? If you were strong enough, that wouldn't be a problem, would it? Whatever you're complaining about, you know what I'm saying? So never complain about anything, 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 anything. You know, the other day, I'm only saying, I'm not saying this complaint. I'm just saying this to illustrate example. The other day, man, I, I I woke up and my neck was like crazy. It was hurting really bad. And I couldn't really look this way. If I wanted to look this way, I had to like turn my whole body, right? I could look this way, but I couldn't look this way. That's how bad it hurt. I didn't tell anybody, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I didn't even tell my girlfriend that like, she was with me all day. And I didn't tell her because what the fuck she going to do? Right. You know what I'm saying? She can't improve the situation. What the fuck she going to do? She's not a neckiologist. Ain't nothing she can do for it. So, like, what would have been the point of of telling her? Right. If anything, she would have got real concerned and she would have felt bad. And I would have negatively I would have let my problem negatively affect her. I didn't even mention it. I just sucked it up and took it like a G until it stopped hurting. You know? I, did, I couldn't not turn my head like this. I couldn't do that. That's how much pain I was in. I didn't tell anyone, right? That was just an example from another day. But this mad shit that happens, and I don't tell anybody. I, I want to think of a better example. Um, yeah, no, I just don't tell, don't tell anybody your problems unless they can help you. And when you tell them the problems, you need to be looking for solutions, not to complain. Oh, this happened. Blah, 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 blah. No, no, no. You need to be looking for solutions. I didn't tell my girlfriend about my neck because I knew what to do. Get some ibuprofen and shut the fuck up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And make some money. You don't need to turn your neck to make money. <laughs> you know, and she couldn't, she couldn't help. She's not a neckiologist. What you gonna do? Give me a neckiotomy? Nah, man. Maybe. Wasn't nothing she could do. And that's cool. She's not qualified to give medical advice. And I know what to do. Get some ibuprofen, suck it up, be a G. 
You know, but I do that all the time. There'll be mad shit happening bad in my life. I'll be going through shit and I don't tell a soul. Right? Unless, unless, they, unless I'm looking for a solution, right? If, if I feel like they have a solution, I want to be clear about this. Asking for help is okay. Complaining is not, right? Asking for help means you've actually not given up, right? Complaining is almost like you're giving up and you're looking for sympathy. Oh, what was me? You know what I'm saying? But asking for help is like is 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 basically saying, no, no, I'm going to beat this thing. I'm going to come out of this victorious. I would like your assistance if you can. That's totally different. That's totally okay. It's definitely okay to ask for help. And if somebody can help you and you know who they are and they can help you, you should definitely should ask for help. But never ask for sympathy. Right? You should be strong enough to handle it. And and just know that am I throwing a bonus on a bonus? Right? All negative emotions come from one thing. They come from you have a preference. You would like things to be a certain way. And reality has not conformed to your preferences, right? And you decided you were going to have a negative emotion because of that, right? And what really helps me is I just believe that that's childish, right? For example, you know, if, if a toddler wants a toy, right, that's his preference. He'd prefer to have this, this new toy, right? But his parents don't want to get it for him. So reality is not conforming to his preferences. What do you do? We cry, throw a fit and shit, right? But we got adults doing that shit because it rained, right? <laughs> like I, I look at this shit, and in myself, I look at it as childish. I don't accept that for myself, but I do accept it from everyone else, right? The people around me, I don't judge them. Don't judge other people by the standards you hold yourself to. That's key too. You don't want to be like arrogant about this shit if you cultivate these these qualities, right? Don't get mad at them because they're not living up to the standards you set for yourself. That, that was a problem I had when I was younger. But what I realized is, you know, Thor doesn't get mad at humans because they can't lift the hammer, right? They can't lift it, man. <laughs> it's not their fault. They can't lift it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And if everyone could lift the hammer, then Thor wouldn't be special. <laughs> so I say that to myself all the time. When somebody does some dumb shit or I just like, you know. And I, I feel myself starting to get upset with them. I'm like, yeah, man, Thor doesn't get mad at the humans because they don't lift because the, they can't lift the hammer, you know. And but to go back to what I'm saying, all negative emotion comes from reality not matching your your preferences. And the reason it's childish to get upset about that is because there's no version of reality where the whole world is going to conform to your preferences, yours and yours alone, because everybody got different preferences, right? And they're not all going to line up with yours. And you got to understand that that's okay. Hey, I would have preferred this to be this way. Didn't work out the way I, I wanted to. Be okay with it. It's cool. Right? You know, and, and I'm not saying you can't get upset with the big things. When people die and some shit, you lose an arm or something. Yeah, you, it's okay. You can be upset for a little while. Right? <laughs> but not like forever. You know? Yeah, but definitely the big shit. Like if you're in traffic, you're like, oh, fuck. People flipping out over traffic. It's just, to me, it seems childish if I was to behave like that. Other people can do whatever they want, right? But I, I look at it as childish, and that's not the kind of man I want to be or example I want to set for my son, you know what I'm saying? Or the people around me, right? You know, or it's raining, motherfuckers get all sad. I got to the point where I actually liked the rain because everyone's all sad and bitching and moaning about it, and I'm just taking it like a G. And I'm like, yeah, I'm way tougher than these people. Yeah. <laughs> but don't get mad at them too. Remember, Thor doesn't get mad at humans because they can't lift the hammer. I think if you follow those advice, you'll be significantly stronger mentally and, and you'll have better results in life. And even if you don't have better results, your perception of it, you know, will be better. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> that was a that was an amazing bonus. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> black man. Oh, concerned black man is back. <laughs> Brandon looks like a Weathers original. 
<laughs> going big homie. That's high praise. Thank you. Brian's back. Mm. I have a small team. I handle the email marketing, project management, and bookkeeping. I'm wearing a lot of different hats. How do you have your office set up so you don't get bored and super focused? How do you structure? Lots of questions. No, there's a lot to unpack there. <laughs> um. <laughs> how do you have your office set up? Okay, how do I have my office set up? Well, the people don't. You know, every my whole team is remote except for Nima, but he's remote most of the time. But like when we need to film, he's with me. Um, man, I got like two offices now, right? Like, uh, so I got I got my 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 office standing desk, sit stand desk, because sometimes I sit down. Um, I mean, no, but he's saying so I don't get bored or 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 don't get bored. Like I don't remember the last time I was bored. I don't remember the last time I was bored. If I if I ever, I don't know, man. I got so much to do. I'm so busy. I'm so so many goals. I'm trying to got, uh, hit up. If anything, I just feel like there's not enough time in each day to hit my shit. You know, I think you need to. If your work is boring, it might be the way you're looking at it, right? You need to look at your, you know, making money, building a business is cool, right? But you need to look at it as if it's got to be more than just making money. Making more than making money, right? Make building a business about fulfilling your potential, right? Make it seem, okay, how much of my potential am I, can I bring to the surface, right? How much can I extract out of, out of myself, right? Because you, 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 everyone has so much potential that, that goes untapped because they never push themselves, right? You have to push yourself to get that potential out of yourself. So you got to really think about that, man. Like how, how much can I push myself? That's what I'm thinking about every day. Like how, how much can I push myself in order to get the most amount of potential out of me each day. And it, to me, that's, you know, that's even more important than the money, man. I love the money. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Right. For the, <laughs> I love, you know, I love getting money. However, it was more like a bigger goal to me is just trying to see how much of my potential I can, I can get out of myself. If you, if you, I think if you reframe it like that, you won't get bored. If anything, you'll start feeling like I do. It's like, damn, I wish it was, you know, five more hours each in each day. I don't. I haven't been bored since the fucking nineties, right? The fucking Bush administration, you know. <laughs> 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 fucking Wu Tang Clan, them days. Tupac. Is there, any, is there another? Uh, any other super chat? We have one more. Calisthenics action. Mm. I have an opportunity to study work in IT, but my passion is in fitness. I have little saved due to my own mistakes. Do I go the IT route or fitness? I feel late at 32 and I'm feeling the pressure. Yo, man, get that job, man. Your money. Yo, you ain't got no money saved, man. And you're 32. That's a fucking emergency, man. Like, yeah, shout out to you, right? You know. So, thank you for giving me, you know, nine of those dollars the little dollars you have left right but it's like yo a 30 year old man with like little save that's a fucking emergency but it's cool it's like it's early right it's still young it's still youngish right so like go get that money man go get that money man listen you got to afford you got you gotta you gotta earn the right to follow your passions you know what i'm saying like you know because following your passion there's probably a lot of people with that passion right it's, and it's competitive and you're gonna have to you know, it might take some time for you to get it off the ground. But in the meantime, you got to eat food, right? And live in a home and wear clothes and things that cost money, man. You know, it's like survival needs to be fucking your top priority right now, you know? We're going to talk about that and more in Baller Mindset. I'm actually, it'll be done with, uh, that Baller Mindset course will be done by the end of the month. But then, you know, Nima and Harry got to edit it. So we're looking at early March. You know what I'm saying? For everyone to get it, but it's going to be really good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we got a couple of minutes left. Do we have super chats? I think if we just not, did. If not, we just finished them, but we have six minutes. All right, cool, 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 cool. Hey, man, let's get into. Um, do you want to do the book? Uh, or is it going to be long? Baller of the week. Okay. You got it. <laughs> Oh, 
what it is, man. Ball of the week. You know what I'm saying? Ball of the week. This week it got, it's got to go. It's got to go to Thomas Brady. Right? Come on, man. He's getting. He's got a ten year contract worth thirty seven million dollars. Right. So he's gonna make be making more working for Fox News as a broadcaster than he did as a player. You know what I'm saying? Thirty seven million dollars. That's definitely that's some baller shit. God damn! How much is that a year? Who wants to? Do we got any math? 30, Where is this? Thirty-seven million and five hundred thousand. Thirty-seven million dollars a year. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> you did that in your head. I mean, yeah, yeah, because you because you Asian, <laughs> right? Like, <'cause, laughs> no, Iran's an Asian. Asian, a Caucasian. Iran, Iran, Iran is an Asian. Yeah, yeah. Asia, right? It is in the yeah, Midas. yeah, in the content, the, con- the content. <laughs> I heard, I heard you guys were good at mathematics. <laughs> That's like a positive stereotype. I take that. I take that. Yeah. That's good. Hey, man, you, you're you doing your people well, man. Listen, <laughs> 10 million. <laughs> I mean, that's a lot of money, man. You know, that's a lot of money. And now I'm motherfucking single now. About to hit these streets. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> He's living right here on the... Uh, um, Miami. He lives in my yeah, he is. He's single with 30. He's single with 37 million dollars. This is a place to be. <laughs> yeah, he is. Shout out to Thomas Brady. Shout out to Thomas Brady. Ball of the week. Ball of the week. Yeah, he didn't win the Super Bowl, but you know what I'm saying? He went in, in life. He went in, in life. The GOAT. He's the GOAT. He's the GOAT. Um, a squeeze in book of the week. One of my favorite books of all time is a book that really helped me build and grow my business to the point where we make multiple seven figures uh, a year. And that book is The E-Myth. The E-Myth. You can see I read I read the shit out of this thing. You know, it's all, my, my copy is all beat up because I've read it multiple times. And what The E-Myth is about basically structuring your business in a way where it runs more efficiently and if you need, if you want to, you can actually leverage yourself out of it, right? And actually making your business even easier to sell if that's your goal, right? So I'm going to break down one of the concepts, right? So when you first start your business, the reason it's so hard, right, is because you have to do everything, right? Boom. You have to do the, the marketing. Boom. You have to do the sales. Boom. You have to create the product right? The product or service. You have to do the customer service. Boom. You know, you have to you know, basically do everything. And that's why I started a business so hard. But even like in marketing, there's parts of that, right? You got, you might have to do, like, I had to do all the Facebook ads. I had to learn Facebook ads and do it. I had to learn Google, Google ads. I had to learn how to write copy. Boom. I had to learn how to, uh, create landing pages like when i first started my business my first online business like click funnels and sam card and all these services to help you make landing pages shopify and all this stuff it didn't exist right i was coding right i was coding in html right so you know i had to web design boom and you know in each part of in in you know uh, this, this parts to all of it, right? It, you can even go further out with all this, right? FB ads, boom, Google, right? Boom. So you're doing all these different things, right? And then you start getting employees, right? But a lot of people, they, they set up their employee structure wrong. So what you need to do, and this is what the book explains, is to start making what's called SOPs, right? So every task that you do in your business, you make an SOP for it. And SOP stands for standing operating procedure, right? And you you have that written down and logged and it, it should be detailed enough that you can give it to someone and they can do it, right? Boom. So like when it comes to writing copy, I wrote a, S, uh, I wrote a SOP, gave this person, boom, now somebody else is writing copy, right? Somebody else is doing the webs, the web stuff, right? And this is how I was able to start replacing myself in these different parts of the business, right? To the point where I wasn't doing much of the marketing either, right? But I'm still doing the sales 
And I did the same thing. We SOP'd off everything I did and then gave, made that jobs for different people. Boom, product service. And that was at the point where the business runs basically without me, right? So instead of being working on my business, instead of working in my business, I'm working on my business. And that's what this book is basically about. Now, it's important to read this at the onset of starting a business so you can gradually start phasing out certain roles, right? Because even if you still work in your business, right, you can't do everything in scale. You can't do every. You're gonna have to build a team to scale, especially if you want to make millions, right? And there's, there's very few one man million dollar businesses, you know, very few, right? So you have to have SOPs. And the beauty of this is, if you have an SOP, if somebody quits, get fired, or dies, right? You can just hand the SOP to the new person that you hire and they can just hop right in the role because they know exactly what they're supposed to be doing. That was basically a summary of the most important part of this book, man. But it's super, it's super good. And, you know, Michael goes into a lot more detail than this. I, I had the, the link is in the description. I had the pleasure of meeting him before and, and I got to tell him what kind of impact this book had on me and, and, and my business. I think you guys should all read it if you plan on being entrepreneurs. Um, this is super important. All right. Man, this has been Victory Talk. Make sure you join the Victory Unit. Link in the description. We got a lot of cool stuff coming, a lot of free courses in there. I'm going to be going live in there more often now because I figured out how to do it. <laughs> so I'm going to be doing that more often. And um, I'm coming out with a, a new free course pretty soon called Baller Mindset. We should have that by sometime in March. Baller Mindset is going to be a real comprehensive uh, course, and it's going to be free for our Victory Unit members only, right? But right now, you can get a, a course in there I have called High Value Alpha Baller. It's, it's super good, you know, super good, and it's 100% free. And um, I think we we released an, another free program. We're really releasing free programs in there all the time now, stuff I used to sell and even just newer, better stuff. And if you want to learn about building money, muscle mindset, make sure you hit that, right? Like the video, and I'll let you all